So today we continue with the theme church life, but we want to discuss teaching for living. Teaching for living. Teaching for living. Let me quickly define teaching and living as we're going to use it here. Teaching is instruction. When we talk of teaching, we're talking of giving an instruction. A teaching is not a suggestion. Scriptural teaching is doctrine. It is sacrosanct. It is not a maybe or maybe not. It is hard. It is fast. It is something that we must pay attention to. In instruction, we, we answer the questions what, why, how, when, where, what next, what else. Questions like that. So those instructions come to answer those questions. Why am I here? Why did Christ die for me? Having been saved, what next? Now that I'm born again, what is expected of me? How do I live this Christian life? That's what instructions do. Instructions are not instructions just because you want to go to a church where somebody understands the scriptures and wants to prove that he knows the scriptures more than any other person. No, that's not the purpose. If that were the case, then that teaching would become a ritual. Do you understand that? But the essence of teaching is to bring life which brings us to living. We are talking of living in this world for God. We are talking of living the life of God. We are not talking of living the bios life, this life that we all know. So we want to distinguish between eternal life and this worldly life. So when we say we are living for God, we are talking of living for eternity. When we, and the way we are living now is not just for here and now. It's for eternity. It is, it is what I call real living. I think there's some, I think it's living Bible that talks it, real, it calls it, it defines as real living. Or real life. That's eternal life. Every other thing that we have, is superficial. It's not real. It is when we live here that we begin to enjoy. But for the believer who has come in and through baptism, he starts to live that life from here. There is, there is, uh, I think, two Greek words: bios and zoe. Bios is the biological life. It is the life of every animal. They are the goats, the bees. That is bios. Anybody who is living that kind of life is not living eternal life. Now, the life that we're talking about here is Zoe. That is the life of God. The Bible tells us in John chapter 3, verse 36. John chapter 3, verse 36. It says, uh, let, let, let me just read it. Something to do with he that believes in the Son. If you believe in the Son of God, it says you have that life. It says, he who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. So, if you, once you come to, the, to, to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the life of God, the Zoe life of God, is put in you. And that is what we mean by living. You need to be taught to be able to live that life. If you are not taught, even though the Spirit of God may be in you, you are most likely going to be rebellious and continue to live the superficial life here, the worldly life that people are living here. In 1 John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 and 12, 1 John 5, 11 and 12. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has life, has this life. He who does not have the son of God does not have this life. 
So if you are not born again, you cannot live this life. So going to church without being born again is to shortchange yourself. Refusing to believe the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord is to remove yourself from the benefit of this life. In verse 20 of the same John chapter 5, verse 20 of John chapter 5, I read, Bible says, and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. We're going to talk a lot about understanding later. That we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. In his son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. So when we talk of teaching for living. We are talking of the kind of teaching, the kind of sound, wholesome doctrine that enables you to enjoy the Zoe life of God that is in us. It is a life that is, uh, what's the word, that, that is attracted to God. It's a life that desires God. It's a life that is hungry for God. When that life is in you, you desire, you will find that you have a strong desire for God. By that implication, you will also discover that you begin to hate sin and anything that is not of God. You begin to withdraw from those things. After a while, people will say that you are a fanatic. But that is because of the life of God that there is a bond between you and God. So when we talk of teachings, we are talking of that kind of doctrine that enables you to receive the fullness and enjoy and live the fullness of the life of God that is in you by reason of the Spirit of God that was deposited there. Is that understood? So, it was this teaching that the apostles understood to be the source of enablement for the people who had been baptized, who had been saved, who had received the Holy Spirit to be able to enjoy the life that God has for them. Otherwise, they will be living in misery, not knowing that they had this life in them. It is, it is our ignorance to this truth that makes us to be afraid. It is our ignorance to this truth that makes us to conduct ourselves like people of the world. It is our ignorance to this truth that makes us to go to church and, and, and be ritualistic rather than recognize the relationship we have, the special relationship we have as individuals with God. 